The fans in Charlottesville wanted Al Groh fired after a week one loss at Wyoming. Here in the last weekend in November, he's got Virginia in line to play for its first league title in 12 years, but he's got to snap a three-game losing skid to Virginia Tech. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on the Toyota College Football Preview. The winner of this game will take home the Coastal Division and play Boston College for the ACC title on December 1st in Jacksonville, not to mention take home the Commonwealth Cup. And with more, we bring in Spencer Tillman from Houston, as we do every weekend. Spence, both teams 9-2, and two, but the Hokies' losses came to number one LSU and at the time, number two Boston College. We mentioned the fact that the Cavaliers lost at Wyoming, then they lost at unranked NC State. But that doesn't change the fact that in this rivalry, they have the same record, and it doesn't really matter at this point who you lost to. Well, you're absolutely right. And again, that Virginia Tech loss to LSU was earlier in the year, and there was a lot of emotion surrounding what they had come off was a very, very difficult uh, offseason and summer for them. So a lot of emotion, very difficult to play in those situations. They've improved as the season has gone along, and Brandon Orr has really helped them out. Not having the year that he did a year ago when he rushed for over 1,400 yards, but he's starting to hit his stride at the right time, and I think that's going to really bode well for Virginia Tech. Yeah, the other aspect of that is if you can get the ground game going, you really play well on the road, and the Hokies 14 and one away from Blacksburg in ACC play since joining the conference mm. in 2004. Uh, what does that say to you uh, about the way that Frank Beamer co coaches his team? Well, I think what it does at the end of the day, it says that he is always known for special teams. I mean, that's blocking punts. That, that was uh, ubiquitous. Everywhere you turned around, somebody was talking about how their special teams are blocking punts and kicks and so forth. But all phases of the game is really what separates him. You've got two solid coaches, one with the, the tradition there. Virginia Tech built from scratch. When Frank took over that program, they were nowhere to be found on the landscape of college football. But he has nurtured it to a point where it's a perennial power. And if it's only out for maybe a year or two, it's for a brief period of time and they're back in the mix. As I said, this season is a microcosm of what he's done over this tenure there, and he's bringing them slowly along to be a contender in the end, which they certainly are. And Virginia Tech looking for its second ACC crown in, in four years, while Virginia really has been a surprise this season. And a lot of that has come with defense, Spence. This Virginia defense led by uh, Chris Long had returned yeah. 10 starters uh, from last year's team. Uh, obviously, everybody knows about Virginia Tech's, def Virginia Tech's defense, but, but what Virginia's defense is going to see and have to be ready for is a dual quarterback threat, which has played much better the last three weeks since Sean Glennon came mm -hmm. in for an injured Tyrod Taylor. Now they're going back and forth. Does the extra week, because let's remember, Virginia had a week off to prepare for this game. Does that extra week help the Cavaliers uh, do enough to, to slow down the two-headed quarterback system? Well, Jason, it's a good point, and, and it will help you in a classic situation where you know both quarterbacks are going to split time. Even if you don't know what percentage of time they're going to split, uh, it does help you prepare. But in this particular instance, Tyrod Taylor uh, pulled a muscle in it, near the rib area, uh, and, and he went out of that Miami game last week. It was a sound victory for him, a big-time win. But again, he went out of the game, and then Glennon came in and then went the rest of the way and had an outstanding game. So the question is, how much is Tyrod Taylor going to actually play? And then how much as a defensive coordinator do you prepare for? So you only have so much time, so many hours to prepare, and that's really the question that Virginia has to deal with. But I will say this about Chris if you're wondering whether or not this guy is for real, he is for real. I mean, he's got a big-time motor that never shuts down. Uh, he's a chip off the old block for sure. Yeah, and I'm sure you've got a couple of hits back in your day from his father, Howie, that uh, you, oh, don't, you, bet. you don't forget those <laughs> either. You know, the other aspect in this game for Virginia is uh, offensively. Jameel Sewell has been very good this year for this team, controlling the offense. What has impressed you most about the Virginia quarterback? Well, one of the things is you got to be a, you have to know who you are. You have to be a steward of an, an offensive system that's going to be conservative. You know the pedigree of your head coach and what he's all about. He has a pro background, so if you can master the requisite throws, a deep out uh, with touch. Uh, the shallow crosses when you go high low which they do a lot of with their tight ends I think if you can master those requisite throws give the coach confidence to allow you to be all that you can possibly be as a quarterback that's the first thing that you need to do master what he wants to accomplish as an offensive mind so uh, that's very important and I think his success when it's augmented with a solid running game gives him the balance that he needs to have confidence because again when any aspect is struggling you look for the counter aspect of your game to bail you out if you're a young quarterback you look for the running game to hold you a little bit. Matthew Stafford went through that with Georgia a couple of years ago, and then they did a uh, kind of a three-headed running back situation that took some pressure off of him. And then when the running game struggled, maybe the quarterback takes the pressure off. So it's really uh, a kind of a symbiotic relationship. One side benefits the other. The other aspect to that is that Virginia and the quarterback especially 
know how to win close games. They've done it time yeah. after time after time, setting records this year in doing so. But this is a test that they have not fared well in of late. Virginia has lost seven of eight to Virginia Tech. This is at home. Do they win at Scott Stadium? I don't think so. I think Virginia Tech is going to win this ball game. It's going to be close, and I think Virginia will be game. But at the end of the day, they'll just come up short, uh, not have enough answers to deal with the dual-headed quarterback situation for Virginia Tech. All right, Spence, we'll see how it all plays out on Saturday afternoon, and we'll talk about it Saturday night on CBSSports.com. We'll see you then, bud. All right, Jason, we'll see you, my man. Folks, the ACC Coastal on the line and a shot at a BCS Bowl after that. It all gets going at noon Eastern on Saturday. And for more on this or any other in the second to last week of the college football season, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.